Hello everyone, I am Dr. Suresh, Faculty of Biochemistry and in this video we will be talking about dietary fibers and its clinical implications. So what are dietary fibers? Dietary fibers nothing but complex carbohydrates, they are not going to be digested, okay? no digestion. The other name for this dietary fiber is non-starch polysaccharides. These dietary fibers are classified into two types based on the solubility. Soluble dietary fibers and insoluble dietary fibers. So, soluble dietary fibers examples I can give mucin, pectin, gum whereas insoluble dietary fibers examples what I can give cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin. So, we are all aware cellulose, cellulose is you can give a best example for complex carbohydrate cellulose. The composition of cellulose and starch is similar though they are made up of glucose units. The thing is the orientation of glucose is different. In starch the orientation of glucose is alpha d-glucose but in cellulose the orientation of glucose is beta d-glucose. Okay, that is only the thing. In starch they have got alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage. In cellulose we have got beta 1,4 glycosidic linkage. So, based on the solubility of uh, dietary fibers, in competitive exams they may ask the question, out of all this which is a soluble dietary fiber or which is insoluble dietary fiber. Remember for soluble dietary fiber, mucin, pectin, gums are the uh, examples. For insoluble, we have cellulose, lignin and hemicellulose are the classical examples. Then what, uh, what is the in nutritional importance of these dietary fibers, okay? nutritional importance. So what to say, when we uh, take complex carbohydrate food, what to happen? So we will not get direct benefit of this because we will not get much energy from this complex carb. Why? Because they are not going to be digested because we do not have such digestive system to digest these complex carbohydrates, right? So when we consume the food which is enriched of complex carbohydrates like dietary fibers, they will be going to the small intestine all the way from there to the large intestine, right? So in large intestine what we have, large intestine we have intestinal bacteria, otherwise they can say common cell bacteria. So what they do? They ferment most of these dietary fibers, right? And exception is here, one exception that is uh, what to say, um, lignin, lignin is a classical example which is not going to be digested or fermented, okay? So most of the dietary fibers acted by intestinal bacteria to be fermented but one exception is lignin. So lignin cannot be digested at the same time cannot be fermented, right? And what they do? They remain longer time in the intestine, I mean like large intestine column. So what happens? They drag lot of water, okay? And they increase the gastric motility of the intestine, okay? So that means indirectly what they are doing? They are inhibiting or like what to say, they are uh, provide, uh, they are increasing the gastrointestinal motility to prevent constipation. So another nutritional point of uh, aspect of dietary fibers, like how much amount of dietary fiber we are supposed to consume. So according to the nutritionist, 40 grams of dietary fiber a person supposed to consume in respect to 
the diet which is equal to 2200 kilo calories okay if you are consuming 2200 kilo calories equal food your food should be included 40 grams of dietary fibers per day and what are the clinical significance dietary fibers so first thing is prevents constipation just now we have learned that it increases the gastrointestinal motility so that it pushes the food out of the body right whatever the waste products out of the body right as constipation is not there there is a decrease risk of hemorrhoids and decrease the risk of colonorectal cancers right as it is adding bulk to the food so if you are including your diet with lot of complex carbohydrates it add bulk to the food and it gives sedative feeling so that you will not consume extra food right and at the same time if you see the calorific value of the dietary fiber it is having only 2 kilo calories per gram of dietary fiber so so much of less amount of calories it will produce and at the same time what happens if you are taking the food rich of dietary fiber what it will do it will decreases the risk of diabetes also because as it is not providing much calories and it is not in allowing to increase your glucose concentration in the blood so it decreases the chance of diabetes so one of the reason for cardiovascular disease is diabetes so again coronary artery disease is also decrease the chances of getting coronary artery disease also reduced by including complex carbohydrates in the diet so that's all about the types of dietary fibers and their uh, clinical implications thanks for watching thank you